All right, so we're going to talk a little bit of NWA here, a little bit, and it's and it's going to it's going to tie into Impact, uh, and NWA and Billy Corgan's revival of the territory system. Uh, before I even get into that, though, they have a pay per view coming up, Saw Win, uh, from Cleveland, Ohio, October twenty eighth. I'm actually going to be reviewing that pay per view here on the channel. So when I made my switch from the impact lounge over to the negative bq you know one of the reasons was i didn't want to be constrained by uh you know by impact i didn't want to be uh trapped in that in that box and even though i'm still going to be 95 percent impact here on the channel if i wanted to review AEW collision or one of their pay-per-views or something nwa was doing like i wanted to be able to do it and i understand that uh, you know, it's not what people come to my channel for necessarily, but, you know, that's the beauty of having your own channel. You can kind of talk about what you want to talk about. So I will be reviewing the Sawin pay-per-view headline by EC3 versus Tom Latimer, formerly known as Bram. So Billy Corgan is relaunching the territory system starting with EC3's Exodus Pro out of Cleveland, Ohio. Now, I've seen the reactions online. You know, there's people there's people who are going to downplay anything that Billy Corgan does. They see him as having a very small wrestling promotion and very indie. And I mean, I don't mean indie like AEW indie. I mean... I mean, uh, VFW indie, you know what I mean? But if you really listen to his interviews that he gives, he gives a cellular one, gives one every once in a while, especially before the pay-per-views. He explains his vision very, very well in a way that I don't think we, we get with impact. I think when, when Don was around and they first took over, you know, they kind of, they kind of put a mission statement out there a little bit, but with us as impact fans, like they operate, but we don't know the vision at all. Billy Corgan's very different. He, he provides a vision of what he's trying to accomplish with his company. So they're starting the territory system. Now, what does that mean? Uh, starting with Exodus pro. So the exit Exodus pro champion is going to be uh, recognized as an NWA champion. So they can, defend the title on NWA programming if they wanted to, if they want to, if they want to book that EC3 also held a seminar with the Exodus pro group. And um, I believe there was three total people that they were kind of competing for an opportunity to appear on NWA television. So he's um, I believe they found, you know, the guys who were looking for, and then they had some, they have their eyes on some others. So as far as though, Let's talk about the NWA roster at the moment. Their roster, obviously, the very first season was the best and strongest it has ever been and probably ever will be when it comes to star power. They got very, very lucky discovering Ricky Starks. He was the one like really unknown on that show that was getting a lot of screen time, and he has become who he is now. I mean, they, they discovered a star there. You watch the product now, and there's a lot of throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks, trying to find the next Ricky Starks. And, you know, the criticism that I've kind of had over the about the roster the last few seasons is that it's comprised of too many nobodies. And when I say a nobody, it, it, I really do not mean that in a negative way. But every time you watch an episode of Power, there is someone on that card. You're like, who? And they don't look physically imposing, and they and there's just a lot of guys on a roster that you look at them and they're they're VFW wrestlers, they're bingo hall wrestlers, they're guys you know have absolutely no chance of appearing on Impact or maybe even MLW or, or definitely not AEW WWE. It, it's so there's a certain type of wrestler that I don't think is very attractive right now to the product. But creating a system like this, especially with your champion, EC3, who has his own promotion, this is attractive for wrestlers who have their own promotions. And 
have and there's a vision involved of you know we can get you guys onto this program because it starts with nwa right it starts with the mlws and the nwas and even the impacts it starts there the first time i ever saw chris statlander was on impact plus well that they let that one slip for right under their nose didn't they but it starts with the smaller promotions but it's it's going to be attractive to a guy like let's say a sammy callahan who's got revolver pro and they are able to partner with the NWA and start work, you know, start a plan of building the stars of tomorrow. You look at the impact business model, maybe not the business model, but the model there, there isn't one. They do gut check every year. Now what has gut check done for anybody so we'll even go back to the Global Forged, which was a total joke, but let's go back to that. Rohit Raju won, and he outperformed every bit of his contract. And then when the contract was up and he wanted to, to make more, to get paid more, to, you know, like this was someone who took every opportunity and every every – Everything they threw at him, he made work and he outperformed the contract. And when that time came up, he says, okay, I'm ready for the next step financially. They didn't want to do that. So you got probably your biggest name to win this thing, right? And as far as when they kind of brought the whole concept back. And now he's not part of the company. There was not a commitment to him to being a star, you know, to being a star for the company. Then you got Shogun winning. And how many times have we seen Shogun on TV in four years? Why why would someone want to go? I don't want to call it a reality show because it's not. But why would someone want to take part in this? Win a impact contract that I'm going to assume, I don't know, but I'm going to assume it is a pay per appearance deal. But you never get to appear. But you're locked to a contract. I don't know that Shogun right now can can even up his indie rate. I don't think he can go to an indie and say, well, I'm part of Impact, so pay me this. I mean, do you, do you think that he could get away with that? What has he done on the show? Set up the ring? Set up the chairs before the, before the the at the venue before the show starts? They haven't done him any favors. And you, you might say, oh, well, he's not ready for TV yet. Maybe that's, that's what they say. How long are we going to take here? Because we're past the point of giving a shit. I mean, I give a shit when I the couple times I see him, I'm like, hell yeah, there's Shogun. But they, there was no commitment to him and his development. And then we got Jason Hotch, who um, who made it on to Impact Television, so he's part of the Good Hands. The Good Hands are a mainstay; like they're not they're part of the show. They're not just you know show up every blue moon. They are a part of the show. He's been given some kind of opportunity. So we can't say it's a complete miss. But then they had a co-winner, Jack Price. How many times has he ended up on screen? I mean, I'm not the booker. I'm not creative. I think you could very easily slide him in with Kenny King and Sheldon Jean. Or you could tag him up with Shogun. There are things you can do with these guys. But right now, what is the what opportunities are they putting out there for for younger, uh, you know, younger talent to want to get involved. I think they had an OVW. There was some kind of tryout competition. They did it with OVW like a year ago, and they had the winners were to wrestle a match on impact. And I mean, it was, there was no promotion for it or anything. They just showed up on the show one day, had a match that no one gave a shit. And I don't even know if it had a, a finish. It was like Tiffany Nieves versus um, because uh, Hanfin kept calling her Neves. Um, I don't remember who she was wrestling. But what opportunity are they providing? Like right now, here's the big thing. Tony Khan for years has dried the indies up, right? Triple H did it first, and then, but he also was trying to dry up Ring of Honor and and TNA. Tony Khan has gotten. Everybody from Indies who's 
anybody who's anything. The Indies are still, you know, relatively hot compared to what they were 20 years ago. But they, you know, they got the Orange Cassidy's and the Darby Allens and and all these guys. I'm not necessarily fans of them, but got it from the indie circuit. It's dry. It is dry of that standout type of talent. So now is that opportunity to really scout and find these these young people who there are who are there now, because right now Tony Khan's in the business of signing aging people from WWE. So there is an opportunity for some of these young indie guys. I would imagine Impact is doing something to scout these people. You can't be you can't tell me they're doing nothing at all. I'm sure that they are. But how often are we seeing you know seeing new young fresh talent really show up on the show? I think Impact is a great place for WWE mid-carders who are no longer with the company. You know, you, you can come in and do something with those guys. That seems to be where they target. But who is targeting the indie scene right now? Billy Corgan's now providing an opportunity to do that, an opportunity to be part of the, some of these small companies. And these guys now, I had I said he's got the bingo hall and VFW wrestlers. You can replace those people now because he's he's creating these partnerships. And here's the crazy thing. Impact had an opportunity to do this years ago when they were doing the Twitch shows and they were partnering with indie promotions. Now, KM got on Twitter and said, you know, they're just piggybacking off these popular companies who can put more butts in seats and what Impact was doing. And logistically, it made sense because they were using their rings and their, you know, local camera crews. But, you know... I don't think impact established themselves during those Twitch years as like a powerhouse. I think they established themselves as needing these indie companies, you know, but had they just had a different approach, a different business model, you might be scouting these companies a little bit harder. How many times you get on Twitter and people are like, well, sign this person, you know, they would put some indie person versus Sammy Callahan or something. And a couple of people they did sign, uh, you know, Larry D and, and uh, what was his partner? Uh, I can't remember his name, the, the real fat guy. You know who I'm talking about. But who was asking for those guys? I, I uh, Oh, man, his name, AC. Oh, man, anyway. And I liked those guys, especially Larry D. I liked him a lot. But no one was asking for those guys. Those weren't hot indie names. But those were the only two that they really picked up in that whole process. As I said, Chris Statlander was, was in their ring. Wrestling like Madison Rain, it was a three-way. I don't remember who the third person was, but they presented her as a jobber in the match, and she's frankly bigger than the majority of the knockouts roster. Not all of them, the, the majority, though, and she's got a cool factor that um, few wrestlers have, <laughs> to be honest. But what way, what's, what's the plan for Impact to refresh this roster and find the the stars of tomorrow. I've said it many times. They're more concerned with reminding you AJ Styles wrestled for them than trying to find the next AJ Styles. I just, you know, yes, they have brought in the Chris Bays and the Ace Austins. I'm not saying that they have made zero attempt to bring in fresh talent and young talent that, you know, that have upside. I'm that that isn't what I'm saying. But do you get the vibe? You're watching this show. You're looking at Bound for Glory, and there's PCO, and there's Rhino in the match, and you got to bring in someone from another company. I mean, when you're when you're watching this kind of match, I mean, this kind of card, does it scream at you? You know, we're trying to find young, upcoming talents. It, it doesn't. You know, I don't even know that. Yeah, the X Division champion right now. So, so Chris Sabin, he's not wrestling. You know, an up and comer. He's wrestling an old wrestler in Kenta, you know? So I think uh, Billy Corgan is getting ahead of the curve here and impact in many situations is in another situation, you know, find themselves again from the outside looking in instead of really getting ahead of things. Like if you're going to have a gut check, what is the goal of gut check? Is it to find the next big star? Is it to find 
a mainstay for the mid card. Right now, they're populating the undercard with these guys. They're not even using them as jobbers hardly. Like Jack Price wrestled a squash match against whoever, uh, Rhino maybe. I don't even know or really care. Why should I? Jack Price has one of the best theme songs in the company too, by the way. But I just, I, you know, we, I just want to see more from Impact when it comes to this. My guy, Lewis, he's been begging on this, you know, uh, banging this drum for, for years. Where's the fresh talent? Where's, where's the system to bring in fresh talent? You can't have a performance center. I get all that. But there, there's got to, you know, even if it's BCW, which maybe it is. I mean, it's if it is, it's a secret. But there's just nothing in place to like to find those those next big things, you know. And now that Tony Khan isn't scouting the indies and grabbing every single little person, like it's it's free game. But it's Billy Corgan, it's uh, it's you know MLW, whatever the hell is the Court Bauer, it's these guys that are taking chances on those people and having them come in and and do something. Billy Corgan says if you get over with him he will give give you an opportunity to get over on NWA television. And it might be a fraction of what of the people that watch Impact. It didn't used to be that way. A lot more people watch NWA than Impact for a while. But right now, you know, Impact has a pretty good stronghold on that. But it just starts somewhere. And I don't think Impact is doing a good job of just providing that opportunity for someone who's getting into the industry. These a lot of these young talents are waiting for AEW to scout them up, or maybe WWE would get them. So they want they don't want to make those commitments to impact. Because why? Who's to say Jack Price couldn't be on AEW television right now? I mean, he could be. Who's to say Shogun couldn't? I, I don't think he's what they're looking for, but why would someone want to win gut check and be locked down for three years, four years? not making any money whatsoever when you you compl- I mean you're completely cutting your legs off any opportunity of another company signing you for what so I've been going on pretty long here and for the sake of not babbling I'm going to st- I'm going to cut it off here but I do think Billy Corgan has a vision he has an idea he's he's seeing it through and he's trying to do something different he's not trying to rival wwe he's creating a farm system a triple a system he doesn't have to pay all these people but it it probably does better business for those companies because they're people are going to want to wrestle for him these young ref people getting into the business they're going to want to wrestle for him for these companies because it gives them an opportunity to, to start somewhere nwa is starting somewhere and that's a company that is you know, is growing. You could you can argue that, but I believe that it is growing. And Impact just doesn't have a plan like that in place. They need to. They have needed to forever now. 